You can't be listening to it this loud when Blake is sleeping. Dad, she's right here. Hi, Blake. Hi, Blake. Oh, how... How does she... I mean, I guess that's okay, but... What were you watching anyways? Daniel Tiger. I didn't know Daniel Tiger had that much bass. Well, let's watch it. <laughs> you are so pretty. Oh, your box is so ugly. Ugh. Welcome back to Life of Bliss. Today, I'm going to be taking the Stereo Integrity HS24s out of their beautiful enclosures there and painting them like I probably should have done in the first place instead of getting them in my system, loving them so much that I didn't want to take them out, and now I'm having to do this almost a year later, which many of you have told me I should paint them to match everything, which I agree, I understand. It's been a little while, but in my defense, they are about 250 pounds a piece. Kind of a pain to move, so let that be a lesson. If you're going to be putting 250 pounds worth of subwoofer in your place, in your setup, probably should just finish it before you ever even get it in there. So the plan is to take some MDF on the front side and make a trim ring on either side of the woofer to give it just a slightly recessed look, and then paint everything with Duratex. But the first step is to get the 115 pound woofers out of the box, so let's get started on that. Look at all the space I have down here now. It's a good thing it's only 105 heat index today. Yeah, it should be fun. Uh, so over here we got all three boxes. Like I said, the plan is to make face plates for all of these and cover up the plywood, give the woofer a little bit of a recessed look. And uh, those front plates will then be three boards thick, so two and a quarter inches thick on those front plates, which should be plenty sturdy for those 24s, I hope. Um, to do all this, we're going to be using a router uh, to cut both the circles and to flush mount everything, or not to flush mount, to uh, trim up the edges and flush trim the edges after everything is attached to those boxes. So I need to go ahead and cut everything down, cut the circles, and start putting everything on the boxes. suck to get out by the way. I'm gonna have to do something different once I get the trim ring on. So I've got everything cut and ready to attach. I was gonna show you how that was gonna happen here. So on the boxes, I outlined wherever the subwoofer was whenever it was in the box. So once I put the face plates on, as long as I'm not hitting that line, I'll be good and I'll just make sure this is even all the way around the box. Now for these L-shaped boxes like that one is there, they're not very tall. And actually you can see that's the top plate up there, that MDF, there's the bottom plate. So it's not going to make sense to make this round over go all the way around. I'm probably going to be cutting these off uh, probably where those screws are straight up to the top and so it's not going to be a complete circle all the way around the woofer 
But again, that's not gonna make sense to do that since they're so short. So, so that's how those are gonna be done. Now to attach these, we've got some tight bond and some 18 gauge nailers. So let's get these suckers on. Alright, so the next step from here is to flush trim all the edges, get rid of all this overhang. Here's where the boards end. We're going to be getting rid of that part right there. And I'm going to cover up the holes because I don't want to get a bunch of sawdust in there onto that pretty white stuffing. MDF. Ugh. All right. So here's where we're sitting. Got all of the face plates on the boxes, and oh, look at the way that came out. That is going to be sick. All right. So the plan now is to paint the bottoms because I'd like to let that sit for a few days before flipping them on their bottoms so I can paint the rest of the boxes. If you'll remember from the last time I used Duratex, I did have some chip off after it had been sitting actually on another box with Duratex. But I just wanna give the boxes plenty of time to cure so none of that happens with these. And it's the bottom, so I'm gonna be rolling those instead of spraying them. The plan is to fill all the nail holes in with a little bit of spackle and then come back. This is spray grade Duratex, but we're gonna use the little foam roller there and just roll the bottoms. Give two quick coats on there, let it dry while we're out of town for a few days come back and paint everything up. It is so hot right now, but I got the boxes done, so that's good news. So, first off, I can't get over how good those look. That is going to be so cool when that's done. I don't know. I just like how it's not connected on the bottom and top, so I uh, can't wait to see it. I did roll these. As you saw, I'm not a huge fan of rolling because you can never really get rid of those roller marks. You can kind of see there. Um, yeah, just not a huge fan of rolling versus spraying. And these are the bottoms, so it's not going to matter. Like I said, I did want to get these bottoms done before we went out of town, so that way they have plenty of time to cure and dry out, and I don't have any issues with it peeling or scratching or anything like that when I flip them over to bodywork and paint the rest of the boxes. So I'm going to let these set up in the 105 degree heat index for the next five days, and then I'll see you soon whenever I finish the rest of the boxes. Welcome back. I hope everyone had a fantastic 4th of July. Here is where we are sitting so far. I've got all the bottoms painted up and they've been curing for about a week and a half now, maybe two weeks. And like I said, with rolling, like you get a pretty smooth texture. It's a little rougher than spraying, but you can't really see it on camera. There are roller marks. You can see it maybe a little bit on the edge there. There's roller marks all over these, so I'm not a huge fan of rolling, but for the bottoms, I just want to get a nice thick coat on there, let it cure, and we'll spray the rest. So next step is to come back, clean up all these edges, get all the glue off, get everything nice and smooth, and then we'll come back, spray everything, and get them all set up. And another slightly warm day today. 
So here's where everything is sitting. Got everything ready to sand down. I'm gonna be using some 80 grit on some of this rougher stuff. There's some, some glue that I didn't completely get off. You can see along that edge there. So that'll be for the 80 grit paper. I'll come back with 220 and sand all of that spackle off. I did a lot of these edges that are gonna be seen just to make sure there's no crease in there. None of this is gonna be structural or really hold anything together. It's just to make sure that there aren't any um, gaps. So whenever I'm spraying, you're not gonna see any gaps or seams. And that spackle is just in there to fill those seams. So go ahead and get these sanded down and they will be ready to paint. So everything's sanded really nice. A um, few little spots, just like right there, will come back and fill in with some of that spackle. But most of these edges are completely smooth. Sand over those with the 80 grit and then the 220 grit. Smooth, ready to paint. Here's another little section here where I'm gonna have to come and fill in. And someone's opening my garage door. Who is that? Son. Hi. Hi, Daddy. I'm on my. Daddy, I'm on. I'm on wildflowers. Okay. All right. We'll do that now. And this is why we'll be having a shop at our next house because my garage is completely full right now. But everything's ready to paint. I got all the boxes sanded smooth, all these little lines filled in. Everything's looking good. I've got a box that my neighbor and I put together for his vehicle as well. So I'm gonna paint that up while I'm painting these. Now to spray everything, I'll be using the spray gray Duratex, which is what I use for my other speakers downstairs. Spraying everything with the starting line gun from Devil Biss. Works great for this application. I'm using a 1.8 tip in there. And a lot of you guys ask me what sort of compressor I'm using with this. I've got a 15 gallon DeWalt compressor right here that I use. It's not a super huge compressor as far as spraying a lot, but it definitely does the job. Um, if I had the choice, I would have something bigger, but I don't really have the room for that right now. If you're gonna be doing a lot of spraying, it's always best to get something, you know, 30 gallon or above, just so we can keep up. Um, with these boxes, with them being so large, I'll pretty much have to spray one entire box, let the compressor fill back up so it doesn't run out of air, and then go on from there. So I'm gonna get everything mixed up, ready to go. With the Duratex, I am going to be watering this stuff down about five to 10% just to get it a little more runny to spray through the gun well. So I'll water that down and start spraying. So I got the first coat put on there. Everything is coming out nice and smooth. Look at that, looking good. So I'm gonna be doing a total of four or five coats on these. We will see how much uh, the Duratex stretches out. I've got two full gallons. I should be able to get five on there, but we'll see. Man, look at how smooth that's gonna be. That's gonna look good. So this is taking a lot longer than my towers did originally when I painted those. I'm having to let the air compressor fill up twice for each one of these boxes. So this probably took me almost 40 minutes just to paint these four boxes just because I have to wait for that air compressor to refill. So like I said, definitely want to get as big of air compressor as you can if you're gonna be spraying stuff like this. But um, another quick thing, the Duratex, I was watering it down, probably not even 5% um, after doing it again and just kind of measuring. It's just a little bit just to help it run a little bit smoother through the gun. So keep that in mind. Four more coats and these will be done.
Now since these boxes don't have quite enough bracing to hold all this polyfill in there, we're going to take some quilt batting, staple it to the bracing just to hold all of that back. So the boxes have been down here curing for about two weeks. I've got everything lined up and ready to go. To install these, I'm going to be throwing them in with some Spax screws instead of insert nuts and bolts. Those have worked really well for me and I've got plenty to dig into with this double layer of plywood up front. You saw through some batting and polyfill in these boxes. I move them where they need to go. This big Bertha here, we're going to have to move that over in the back corner before we throw that sub in because it gets a little heavy. Gonna have to find a new place for a ball pit too, but that's all right. I think we're gonna enjoy that subwoofer back there a bit more. So let's go ahead. I'll get these thrown in and then fire everything up. And here's how it looks now. It's now a continuous black wall of sound surrounding the screen and looks pretty amazing in my opinion. The large box in the back corner blends in about as well as a 250 pound gorilla, but it's better than it was before. The HS24s are being powered by a single Symbosan FP20,000Q 4 channel amplifier pumping out 2000 watts RMS and 4000 watts burst power to each sub. Now since getting these back into my system, I've had everything remotely tuned up by Aaron and Zach who are big contributors to the base EQ thread on the ABS forum. They were able to remotely come into my computer and get everything sounding as smooth as possible out of my Yamaha RXA3070. The Mini DSP HD 2x4 allows them to timeline everything and to get the best signal response possible and maximizing SPL. If you guys are interested in this service from Aaron and Zach, I'll leave a link down below to the Youth Man Crew Facebook group, which Zach is a moderator of, and you can start a conversation with him there. Now I'm pretty decent at tuning my system, but these guys took it to a whole new level. They took away the house curve and gave me back that chest thump that I've been missing, and we did a little bit of tweaking on my amplifier to squeeze every ounce of SPL out of this system and it is insane. So not only does the system sound better blending in with the mids and have a flatter overall response and giving me that chest thump back, watching movies with bass EQ has completely changed my movie watching experience. Now I'm not gonna get into great detail about what bass EQ is. In fact, I'll leave a video link down in the description below from the legendary Brown Notes video which is an awesome name by the way, but he goes into more detail about what Base EQ is and how to apply it to your system. Long story short, you need a mini DSP and upload files for specific movies that will bring back the lowest frequencies that have been edited out by the sound mixers. So anything from 30 hertz and below or 25 hertz and below in some instances will be mixed back into the system and give you those ultra low notes filling in that low end. If you have a mini DSP and a decent subsystem, you really need to look into Base EQ. I'll leave links for that thread on ABS form down in the description as well, as well as the legendary Brown Notes video. And now the moment that most of you have skipped the rest of the video for, demos. Now real quick before we get into those, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. It really does help out my channel and I enjoy bringing this content to you guys. I've got some pretty cool stuff coming your way including a unique 5.0.4 setup as well as a new processor we're going to be throwing into the mix. If you got any guesses on what that will be, comment down below. Let me know what you think. I appreciate you guys watching Life of Bliss and enjoy some demos.
Let's light him up. Let's go. Let's pick it up. This is the moment you've waited for.